The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. And I got Lou from Fairfield, Connecticut, man. How you doing, Lou? I'm doing good, Daryl. And I got to tell you, you're not just blowing hot air out there. I think the way you look at the market is terrific. You're a nice guy as far as over the TV. All the research you do, all the homework you do, I truly appreciate it. I appreciate the, your view of the market. It's awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Daryl Martin. Here to the Diagnostic Trading. I'm your host, Daryl Martin, right here on TFNN.com. You can listen to us at TFNN.MOBI on your mobile phone, or you can also check us out live at Tiger TV on TFNN.com and inside the e-signal platform broadcasted to you that markets are exploding they woke up right after i got off the air yesterday and did a big pop and then now they're doing a big drop we got the dow almost down 300 points right now i haven't even checked the high to low maybe it went down there already let's see what do we got on the low of the day but uh let's see 12 where we at man we're at 290 down we're at 1661 about four points below that was pretty close 300 points there. We have 34 points down on the S&P. The Russell is currently down 25 points. And we got the Dow is down 268. So I hope you're having some fun in this market. I've had a few trades going on on the side here as I've been talking to some other traders. And it's been hard to keep up with them, man, with the market moving like it is. But uh, it was sort of pointing down a good chunk of the morning. That made it a little easier versus uh, popping and reversing on us. But uh, going in, just a nice little move right there at 10 o'clock. Just kept its way working down was even getting a short all the way before the market opened and uh there's just there's a lot of news flowing out right now so and that uh crude oil dropping down is really busting some things too so uh with crude moving around like it is and everything else that's happening we're seeing some awesome awesome drops i had uh we'll walk through some of those step by step into the day uh, let's see the word about a big euro zone slow down dow falling um, people are anxious. Uh, let's take a look real quick. Let's just take a little look at our friend, the VIX. All right. So let's go on in here and let me pull this one of my charts over here and we'll bring this up. I don't know why this thing is not going right into maximize. There we go. Okay. And pull up the VIX. Aha. Yeah. So let's get it on up there. It's up at, what, 18 right now? And it uh, looks like it uh, doesn't want to look back down, and that's what we want. We want that volatility. Love that volatility. The more volatility, the better, in my opinion. Um, we're right up here sort of at a breaking point, but we are breaking a new little high from recently, the last couple of weeks. Let's back out and see uh, maybe just how far that break goes. Uh, let's go on to the four-hour, and let's see. We have been this high since... February. So, and uh, February wasn't that much higher overall. Backing it on back down, looking at the daily view. And um, so, yeah, if we can uh, get past this level right here, bust on up, what does that do? That increases the premium and the options. It increases the market movement. More movement, more trades, bigger trades, bigger profits, more premium. The binaries are further away. The spreads have more premium built in. It's easier to do premium collection. Of course, the market's moving more, so you better be uh, you know, on alert. But um, be more careful when you're out of the money. They may be more expensive. They may be further out. Um, and you know, you'll be seeing in the money that uh, may work a little better for you because they're further away. So just some cool benefits, but uh, we're definitely seeing some big moves and seeing some big increase in implied volatility. Just now getting in the 20s range. And how high will it go? And um, I was just talking to a trader last night. One of the traders I work with, he's over in Thailand, and uh, you know, he's been all over, floor trader, everything. He's like, man, this, this VIX is way too low for how high this market is. He's like, this thing's just going to explode. And, uh, I mean, he was right. Called. He's like, I'm, just, I'm getting ready for it to go short. And uh, the thing just crashed on down. 
Uh, let's go ahead and catch up on where everything else is at. We'll come back, do some analysis. We've got copper right now is up about a percent. we got gold up over one and a half. Silver's up over 2% on the day. Oil currently down over a buck fifty. It's crashing on down. I want to say it was uh, Larry that talked about it going down possibly to 50 and, um, and in the coming months here. We got natural gas right now is down about a third of a percent. We got corn is up over half percent. Soybeans up over half a percent. Um, so, you know, not massive moves in ags, but right now you got the plenty of, oh, we just busted three. We're at 320 points down right now in the Dow. It continues to crash down. Hopping on, looking over at the pound dollar. Pound dollar is currently down 38 pips. Euro dollar down 40. We got the euro pound down four. Euro franks up 33. Your yen is down 89 with the Aussie yen down 91 and the Aussie dollar down 46. Decent moves in the FX markets, massive moves in the commodity markets, and some great moves as well in the energy and the metals markets. We're going to over at the dollar index. Dollar is gaining strength up over a quarter percent along with the bonds, about a third of a percent right now on the day. So where does that leave us? I don't know, just some great trading opportunities. Like I said, I hope you have taken advantage of some of them as all this has been going along. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a few charts, all right? Let me bring these on up here. We'll go into them. And uh, these are just some of the ones from last night. These are MVPs from last night you could have taken. So for you nighttime traders out there, definitely be checking this on out. That's the Aussie dollar, as you can see, doing really, really well. And let's go. Let's go and check out the pound dollar from last night. And uh, looking on at that one, we got the pound dollar. Great MVP short right there in the evening. Already had a short, and they gave another short. Dropped on down for you. Uh, going down, looking at the euro dollar right now. On the euro from last night, pulling that one on up. And let me see here. Um, and on the euro dollar, got another great short. So just starting to head down first thing in the morning there. At, or, or in the, yeah, in the morning on this one. But anyway, some great trades. Uh, got a nice downturn on NASDAQ. And it's uh, this doesn't even show half the story. This is a, like a delayed chart, right? So we got uh, the market moving another hour since then, and it's really dropped. We already had a great downturn going on, and uh, MVP short on that one as well. Uh, if we go on into gold, and let's see here. Gold, again, these are ones that I took before the show. And uh, moving on down, and uh, coming on back down from that big run up. And it was a massive, massive run up, and then now it's coming on back down. So lots of uh, interest rate speculation. We had a big move yesterday that came in right after the show. Um, Due to the uh, Fed minutes, usually not a big factor, but there was a lot of speculation on what really was going to happen there, and that caused a lot of uncertainty. And uncertainty causes volatility and causes increased implied volatility, increased movement. So certainty, when you're a trader, is actually your friend. As, off, as weird as that sounds, because you want certainty because you're trading, but uncertainty is what causes the market to really move around. Um, and versus just sit there and be quiet and, you know, uh, just where you can't stand it. Um, so uncertainty, like I said, is sort of your friend as a trader because <laughs> um, you get that volatility and that premium along with it. Let's go on down here to the DAX. The DAX uh, moving on down, but a little, a little leap, leap reversal going on, and um, so some decent trades there. Right there came down, was shooting on down this morning, popped on, back up, and then um, worked on another short right there at the end of the day, just doing some you know decent little momentum scalps on the way back up, and then even on the way down there was some as well. The uh, dollar index, let's check that out. On the dollar index on over here, see what we got going on. And uh, just running up, 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 king dollar, taking back its position. Didn't like being called a loser yesterday, decided to move on back up and take over. Uh, the Dow, let's see, last report, hotel was down 221. Now it's down over 300 points. Let's see, we got a current quote board. Let me bring that on up. We're down 306 points on the day. And... Uh, FOMC minutes were really the big microscopic topic. Uh, and let's see here if I can even get some of these links to work. But uh, let me see. I'm going to try to pull it back on up. We'll go right over here. So here's you know one of the reports over Market Watch. And like I said, I'm just trying to get it to come up if it'll work on the link I'm going for. And try one more time. If it didn't work, then that's okay. Um, anyway, so seeing things crash on down, we got stock market, um, you know, making fresh lows going on right now, and uh, that's over on the briefing report. And you know, I'm, I'm watching multiple different things. Um, I'm not watching them in place of my charts, mind you. So in between me doing trades, sitting there, you know, being sort of bored, 
I'm always going to follow the charts. I'm not going to follow that. Looks like the headlines aren't where we're popping up there. But um, then I'll use things like, you know, Financial Juice is one of my favorite ones to follow because I can go in on it and it will um, – basically, how can I put this? It will allow me to see reports from all over the place. And it, it's just a news feed thing. It's free. Um but a uh, cool trader I know, he made it as just something that he thought would be helpful. And, you know, he goes in, he feeds it on in right here. And they talk about news and all that stuff and, and everything else. But anyway, so there's, there's just constant feeds coming from all different sources. And that's what I like about it. Um, anyway, so equities, uh, and we've been talking about this. I talked about this last week, about the Europe stuff. And I talked about how equities were getting cremated. They're really worried about their deflation. So they're trying to get inflation. Um, they're trying to pump up exports. That's part of what is really trying. They're trying to inflate that dollar or deflate that dollar, inflate their currency. Um, and it really is just uh, – it took off even first with the dovish tone. You know, they're talking about in the federal minutes that came out yesterday. And uh, it's just – it's been pretty rough over in Europe. And uh, I talked to a trader that's in Spain – uh, yesterday, he, you know, he loves Spain. He lives in the south side of Spain, and I don't remember the exact location. But um, anyway, it's a beautiful area, but he talked about how the economy is just completely in the hole. It's been one of the worst over there, and uh, it's starting to catch up. And this is what every – all like if you talk in the trading community, whatever has been talking, like it's going to come. It's going to come. So obviously you've got to trade the charts because you don't know when it's going to come. And even when it does come, if you're not trading the charts, you're going to be too late or too early. But uh, pound-dollar decline below um, – and Draghi was talking a little bit. He uh, had a little impact on that, so that's why it's always good to have those be aware events going on. Draghi came out, talked at 11 a.m. Um, euro dollar, of course, also dipping down there. Let's, uh, let's bring the euro dollar on up. Talk about that one right now. And uh, he's just, it's okay, everybody. Don't worry. We will do everything. There is nothing off the table. You know, that's sort of his, his little line. Um, but anyways... So, you know, he came out and basically just reiterated, talked about, we're really going to lift inflation back to normal levels. What's funny is how that almost sounds like a good idea. Inflation back to normal levels. We're going to take money out of your savings accounts. We're going to make sure every, every euro you got is worth less money. We're going to really lift that on back up, you know. Um, and I understand inflation at a certain point does have a value because as the market grows. But really, I mean, it doesn't have to. Right? <laughs> Would it be nice if it just became worth more versus it became like worth, you know, dollars became worth less and therefore it took more dollars to buy it? I don't know. Just a thought. You know, I, I know that's just maybe not a popular opinion among the Fed heads. But uh, anyway, so he's going in there and he's like, hey, I'm committed to this. I'm going to do it. We're going to make it happen. Nobody cared. It just kept dropping. The more he talked, which is opposite of what usually happens. The more he talked, the more it dropped. Stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Daryl takes your phone calls <laughs> now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. All right, folks, come on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And I want to remind you something about Columbus Day. Uh, banks are closed. The Fed is closed, Okay. And uh, so that does impact the markets. The markets, uh, I was wondering if the markets were closed. Found out markets are not closed, but a couple things are happening that you just might want to be aware of. Okay? Uh, let me bring this up for you, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. And I had it up a little bit earlier, but... Okay, so right here on the CME holiday page, they have a little notice. And... The pits are going to be closed. The you know the open outcry is going to be closed for forex and for your interest rate products like your bonds and your 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 forex futures. Okay, so that is important for you to know. That will impact the market some. What is even more a little bit different is they're actually going to do settlement at a different time. They're going to be doing it at twelve central, one o'clock eastern instead of three o'clock. Okay, so like on at least on the FX futures. Um, so just be aware that for the futures and options, they're going to move settlement to 12 Central, 1 Eastern, and the pits are closed in both of those markets on Monday. The indices and the other markets, the commodities and all that, they'll be on their normal process, okay? Um, and so you can check out, if you want to read more into that about, you know, euro dollar futures, treasury futures, treasury options, you know, other interest rate futures, all that stuff, you can hop over to the CME website. Um, I just typed in CME Holiday. And the first link that popped up took me right to this page. And they usually have a PDF if they're closed. They're not closed completely, just partially. 
And uh, they should really update this Excel sheet because all it says is that they're open. But um, if you go into the notice, then you'll find out you know, what is closed and what's not. Um, Globex will remain open. Okay, so Globex interest rates will still be trading. At FX futures on Globex will still be trading, just not the pit. But I want to give you that holiday update. Um, and let's see here. So we got that. And uh, I guess I'll add that to... Let's see. To my calendar. Let's see. Okay. So... Um, All right, so we'll get it. The Fed is also closed. So just, you know, putting all that stuff in perspective for you. Um, all right, getting back on track. Uh, like I said, the more drag you talk, the more the market likes to drop. Uh, looking at the Aussie. Let's go on to the Aussie and check it out from last night. And, um, oh, I don't know if I got the right one. There we go. Okay, pulling up the Aussie dollar. Let me go ahead and grab up my news plan. We'll pull that up as well. Look at it side by side, see how that trade worked on out. And uh, we got quite a bit of move, obviously, and just about everything this morning. What about last night? How well did it work? Let's go in. Let's zoom in and check it. Okay, so on the Aussie, the release came out over here on the 9th, or the 8th, I'm sorry, um, on the employment report at 830. And we had a few different ways to do the trade. I talked about the different variations uh, to do the trade. And let's see here. Uh, we talked about seven to nine, and we talked about you know the, the report comes out at eight thirty, so you could do eight to nine, right? You could do let's see what eight to ten. You could do six to you know eleven, seven to eleven, eight to eleven, okay. So those are all possibilities of different times you could check, different spreads you could check. Basically, you're looking at entries at either, you know, 6, 7, or 8 on the trade for expirations of, you know, 9, 10, or 11. And you can just watch it each hour. So as long as the maximum risk date at 35. So let's look at how it did. We went in and um, we said, hey, you can get in as early as 6 o'clock. I'm going to have to back up a little bit and move this thing over. There we go. Okay, so as early as 6 o'clock, you go to as late as 11. Well, the lowest we got over here on the 6, 42 pips. Okay. What if you got in at 7? Okay, get on down here, 47 pips. What if you got in at 8 o'clock? It's right here. And we got 54 pips. Okay, so that was our maximum move. Would have liked a little more than that, but that's still not that bad. We're basically looking at the total risk plus the risk on the other side. So we're looking for a 45-pip move. Uh, right around that is the trade we're looking at. Now, one of the most important things, I mean, and really, like, not kind of important, like, really important, that would have helped you on all three of these scenarios. We're going to talk about it when we get back, of where you should have known to take profit. So stay right there. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we're going back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And we're checking out where things are at right now. Uh, we're talking about the Aussie dollar, and what I'm telling you is, you know, this one moved 42, this one moved 47, this one moved 54. Well, if you put in for $35, you probably needed to make about 47 pips on the trade in order to, you know, or maybe even a little more than that in order to recover all your profit. But one thing I've taught you on the straddles is you don't always have to make a one-to-one. -one. You want to pay attention to your deviation levels. And as soon as you put on your entries, you want to put in your take profits because on straddles, what happens? It can pop back the other way in a heartbeat, Okay. And you can end up having a winning trade turning into a losing trade. It's really easy for that to happen on a straddle because it goes into profitable territory and then it pops back. Iron Condor, you'll love it when that happens, and it happens a lot. That's why we do them so much. But look at this. We had the deviation. We were right within the deviation zone, okay, right there, just within a few ticks, right there, right in the deviation zone, which is just going to be a few ticks above and below, about three ticks literally, above and below the deviation zone. So right at that point, that's where you should have had your take profit. If not, it would have popped on back up. And depending upon where you get in, your profitable trade probably would have turned into a losing trade. And it may not have been a full one-to-one -one for you. Maybe it was 0.5 or 0.7, you know, reward-to-risk ratio, but still, nevertheless, a profitable trade. Yeah, but it moved perfectly right to the one deviation before turning all the way back around. All right. So that's our Aussie dollar news trade. Now, if you got a 3 o'clock, which, you know, you can't really do that on the total spreads, but if you did uh, do, like, binaries or something, I think flew all the way back up to one and all the way back down. I mean, it's been a incredibly volatile 
you know, period of time here with all these trades happening. I mean, look at that. All the way down to one deviation, all the way up to one deviation on Aussie dollar. And then moving back down, drop. So basically, that's a deviation down move. Back up to settlement, back up to one deviation. So that's a two deviation up move. And then we got back down to settlement, back down to one deviation, which is a two deviation down move. So we've got, it went down a deviation, up two deviations, and back down a little over two deviations from high to low. Some incredibly massive volatility. When we said straddle, we meant straddle. We meant the market was moving, and it definitely moved. Um, let's see here. Then going on over. Let's see. All right, uh, we had pound bank rate. Let's look at that, see how that one went out there. And I'm trying to pull it up, so just give me one second over here. Got Aussie dollar, check, check. And go on into the pound, pull it on up. Let's see how our news plan fared with all this crazy volatility that was going on. All right, so what were we looking at? Well, on the news plan we went over yesterday, we talked about getting in at 6 for an 8 a.m. expiration, saying that's usually a pretty flat time. Um, and even though the pound has had a massive drop down today, so over a deviation move, um, then we go on over here, and we go 6, we go to 8 a.m., basically a pip. So you would have looked at about max profit on that. We were looking for a $35 reward. Max profit uh, potential. That's buying the lower spreads. Max profit plus selling the upper spreads. Max profit combined. So there's two max profits combined. What is the minimum profit? Okay? And that's what we're looking at for you to put that together. Um, but, yeah, just to pip off. So pound dollar there. Uh, we'll wrap that one up and another profitable trade. Let's see what we have tonight. Uh, well, I guess we got natural gas. We can check out natural gas as well. Let's look at it. And we pull up natural gas. We have the natural gas inventory coming on out. All right. So there we go. Natural gas inventory. So the market moved exactly to expectations. And... See if any spike triggers uh, today. I know some people like to focus on spike triggers on invent on news. Um, natural gas being a little bit lighter in the liquidity than oil, but uh, you know, nevertheless. And looks like we did get a sell. It was at top of hour. Where did that actually trigger at? Oh, a five minute bars. Okay, it did come on back down. It would have expired in the money at expiration, depending upon really where your strike was. The strikes are pretty wide on natural gas. Uh, but anyway, so you know, not horrible, not great, but profitable. Nevertheless, and we got buys and sells, basically butterflies going on earlier in the day. Got a sell right there, expired in the money, and um, so, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Okay, so a few uh, good spike strikers, but the main thing I want you to see out of all this was um, that uh, I gave you the expected movement um, yesterday, I believe, or the day before, maybe. I think it was yesterday, on natural gas for this hour, and we were right on target uh, what are we looking at? What of our expected uh, move was um, 0.908. We moved 0.150. So just a little bit beyond that. And natural gas takes a little bit weird uh, with the 0.005s and all that. But anyway, so uh, we were right, you know, right on it. Just barely exceeded it. But uh, a nice, great move would have worked great for, you know, a lot of different potential trades setups that you could do. Okay. Uh, we also had unemployment claims come out this morning. Um, let's review a little bit of that real quick for you. Bring this on up. Talking about how these news reports actually came out. Uh, Pound had its bank rate. It left its bank rate unchanged along with its asset purchase, purchase facility. Uh, no big surprise there. That's what was expected. Unemployment claims came in a little bit uh, better than expected. They expected 91 came in at 287. They did revise down the last number. That's sort of a positive thing, but the market really didn't seem to care too much about that. Um, and usually doesn't unless it's just drastically off and employment becomes the bigger employment becomes, the bigger unemployment claims become. Okay? So just as the, if you start hearing the Fed talk a lot about employment, 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 then unemployment claims become more volatile. Um, natural gas storage came in about of expectations. Uh, came in a little lower than expected. 
And uh, so even though so supply goes down, price goes up, fundamentally, that makes sense. That doesn't always happen that way. It can happen the complete opposite. And uh, you can look at the latest release. It's sort of like looking at the inventory release. And uh, so it represents an increase of 105 from the previous week. Stocks were at this, uh, were 309 less than last year at this time. So, um, and 378 below the five-year average. So actually, the that, that gives you a few different things. Um, stocks were 359 British thermal units, whatever it is, less than last year. Okay, so the number was less than expected if storage. The number was less than last year, and the number was below the five-year moving average. So that's like triple fundamental bullish because supply down, price up. Uh, now, all they have to do is flip a switch, and they can, you know, they got plenty of natural gas wells capped off, so it's not easy for them to move that thing around really easily. Why you see all the prices moving around so much, and natural gas is like a 1% to 3% moving instrument. But uh, anyway, so fundamentally, it lined up today. Either way, who knows, who cares, but it popped on up, and 1030 actually gave you a little point there because it gave you like, that's like 10 minutes before it just took off. So if you were trading fundamentally, then you definitely uh, we would have caught a nice ride and would have known right where to go to as well. Okay, that catches us up on the natural gas inventory report. And talked about unemployment claims, got the Aussie dollar. Uh, we're going to have home loans tonight. So we've got a couple of trades for you to be aware of for this evening. Aussie dollar home loans is going to be released at 8.30 this evening. Um, we're looking for a 6 o'clock entry for an 11 o'clock expiration. Just trying to get as much uh, premium time, time premium in there as we can. Trying to grab a profit of $30. That's buying the lower spread, selling the upper spread, the two max profits totaling $30 or more, okay? No less than 30 bucks. So that's the Iron Condor we got set up for this evening. we got one more set up for you. That's going to be a nighttime one here over on the Pound Trade Balance. On the Pound Trade Balance report coming out at 4.30 a.m., we're going to look for a nighttime overnight one, entering at 11 for a 7 a.m. expiration for a minimum profit of $30. So that basically means we're expecting a 30 pip or less move, okay? And same thing on, you know, the Aussie dollar. So we go and look at that one. That means we're expecting 30 pips or less of movement. And as long as it is that or less, it could actually be a little bit more. We could still be break even on the trade, but depending upon exactly the prices you get filled at. But if it's 30 or less, then we should be just fine as long as you get at least 30 bucks. Sometimes you got to lag in. If you lag in, you really got to be watching your stop until the other side gets hit. Uh, or te- I mean, hit meaning filled. So just be aware of that as well. Uh, what else we got? We got Draghi going to be talking. Um, ECB Draghi coming up and talking on Thursday. Um, October 9th, 2014, at 11 a.m. So, obviously, he uh, impacted the market. And um, let's see. That was already, yeah, that's one from today. I, I, I thought that we had an 11 p.m. when I was like, he's talking again. Uh, so, yeah, that was the, I talked to you about that one yesterday. I'm glad I gave it to you because he definitely did shake the market up. Uh, looking over at the dollar, yen, yen, dollar. Um, let's see here. Uh, we got yen policy, monetary meeting minutes coming out, tertiary activity, et cetera, et cetera. All these little reports coming out. Just be aware. Could uh, get some nice little volume spike uh, reports. Um, you never know what comes out with some of those. And they're not ones that have enough uh, consistency to do something with it. RBA Governor Eddie is going to be speaking over there for the Aussie dollar. That could impact it at 845 tonight. Those are your be aware events for this evening. Going on into the morning, um, IMF is going to be having a two-day meeting starting tomorrow. And uh, that can impact anything that's not open to the press, but everybody comes out and they do their little speech and I want to be on TV thing. And they uh, talk for a few minutes and, you know, every once in a while they say something that uh, messes things up. So uh, just be aware. uh, Keep a little headline runner, you know. Uh, You don't have to be on top of everything, but don't be surprised if something like, you know, knee-jerk reaction happens off of something that's sad, especially after the volatility we saw today. Um, France industrial production coming out. Not a massive mover, but can have a little, you know, 10, 15 pip pop on euro dollar. And uh, looking over at CAD employment change, this is going to be our big trade for tomorrow morning. Um, the report's going to come out at 8.30. It's their, it's their NFP. It's the CAD NFP, if you will. And uh, looking for a straddle on it. Uh, dollar CAD, definitely be paying attention again to your deviation levels on this for taking profits. But uh, we're entering at 8 a.m. for a 10 a.m. expiration. Um, if you can get longer, okay, if you can get a 7 to 3, more power to you. Go for it, okay? If you can get it at 7, if you can get it at 8, whatever, for a 3 o'clock, that is also an option. Um, so, you know, every combination, you know, just be aware of every combination on that. I definitely would uh, not go for the 9 o'clock. I'd give it as much time as I can. So, 
Um, you can do that. And uh, look for a straddle on that uh, as a possibility. So 10 a.m. or a 3 p.m. expiration. If, you know, sometimes it's only a, a few dollars difference. Sometimes it's the same price. It's been sort of weird. Every once in a while you'll see it like that. It's been upon how ID is shaking things up. If it's too expensive, then, you know, you could always look at I me. Mean, if you see the thing, you know, pricing at 50, 60, whatever, you could always look at doing an iron condor on it also, okay? So remember, iron condors are always a possibility when I put up straddles. Straddles are always a possibility when I put up iron condors. I real prefer iron condors over straddles just because, as you saw, like on the Aussie dollar minute, pops, hits it, flips around, and goes the other way. That'd been great for an iron condor. That's not great for a straddle. So you gotta you gotta make sure you take those profits. You can't be trying to ride out the straddle to see just how much you can squeeze out of the market. Um, let's see here. Going on in. Whoops, wrong button. Um, <laughs> Bring back up the Tiger Cam, and there we go. Got it back up and on air. All right. So with that being updated and bringing back up my charts, we're here. Let's see where we're at. Um, what else do you need to be aware of for tomorrow? Uh, let's see. Tomorrow we're going to have uh, U.S. import prices coming out. Um, FOMC member is going to be speaking. Uh, let's see here. Just trying to see if I see any typos as I go. Like I see FOC on FOMC. Um, and so a little speech there. Probably not a big market mover, but just know what's happening. Um, we got CAD, uh, you know, business outlook survey coming out. And so that one will come out at 10.30 a.m. Could affect you dollar CAD traders. Uh, we got, this is probably the big one. We got the ag reports coming on out. So over on the wage report, won't be the annual production. That didn't come out, obviously, except for annually. But got the waste production coming on out, and let's see if that's, yep, October 10th. So I just want to make sure I'm right. At 12 noon Eastern time, this is going to impact your corn, your wheat, your soybeans, your cotton, you know, all that stuff that you're trading out there. If you trade in the ag markets, be aware of the wage report. If you don't know what it is, go back and look at it, okay? Go back and look at past wage reports. Go back and look at how the market has moved. On the markets you trade, you need to know about this report because this report can kick the crap out of you if you're not aware of it, okay? This may be a good report if you're long corn or short soybeans or you have an opinion or an outlook. So you can trade a spread by itself. You can trade a binary. You could do a straddle both directions. You could hedge a position by, you know, it's, it's five spreads to one corn. It's five spreads to one soybean, okay? So that's the ratio for you. Use a scanner to help you find the right one to do an ultimate hedge. So there's a lot of ways you can trade this report. The most important thing is you need to be aware of it because if you don't have a plan for trading the report, get out of the way, okay? Because it is a bus and it can easily just, I mean, fly. I, I've seen it move limit days. I've seen it also just pop to maybe a deviation, come on back, you know? Um, but I've seen it do less. I just want you to make sure that you're very, you know, aware that, you know, a good chunk of these, I'm going to tell you every one of them, but a good chunk of these can have some big moves and some can have some monster moves. Um, especially that one that comes out at the beginning of the year at the same time as the annual report. All right, share it there. We'll be back right after this break. take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, come on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And let's do a wrap-up right now. We had some massive moves happen yesterday right after the show. We had some massive moves kick in right at the beginning of the show right here. Let's check out where the markets are at right now. We still got the S&P is down 33 points. Russell's down 21. NASDAQ down about 60 points on the day with the Dow down nearly 300. We'll get on over at copper is up 1%. Gold is up over 1.5%. Silver is up over 2% on the day. Oil down 1.7, natural gas down a half percent right now. Corn and soybeans sort of flatlining, both up about, uh, what, uh, one's up, the other one's up. Yeah, they're up, both up over a little half percent right now. Soybeans still ticking on up a little bit. We got the pound still moving, down 43 pips, euro dollar down 44. And uh, Aussie yen had some nice moves, down 88 pips on the day. Uh, let's go in and look at a couple of these markets. We have to take a couple minutes left. We'll see what's going on. And what maybe we can find. Uh, S&P still moving down. Look at that. I mean, just does not want to give it up. It's pushing right now at the two deviation move. That's a 97% per, uh, expected movement, meaning only 3% of the time would it be expected to actually exceed close below a two deviation level. So it has not yet closed below, but it's closed right at it. And uh, it's still got a couple hours left in the day. If it does move on down, we could definitely see a further fall on the market. Uh, let me see what I got here. And I'm just trying to see if I have anything else. So 
just want more time, right? I want to go through and do more stuff with y'all here. But uh, we got uh, crude, okay. Let's see. Uh, now I want to go into s and I'm trying to find. I have all these little plans I make up. Um, okay, so there we go. Uh, but, yeah, so with 1924.75 obviously being our current target uh, market. On the S&P E-mini, moving on down, I'm trying to see if I even got another target below that. The only target I got really lower uh, is going to be right on down here to 1906.25. So that would be on down to a triple deviation move. That would be a lot to push it on through. I'm not saying it's not possible, but uh, that's really a pretty massive move. I, I wouldn't be shocked to see the market bounce uh, between 1924 and 34 for a good chunk of the day. Um, and that's just, wow. So uh, target, I mean, we, I have basically had a, my target for the day to the downside. Um, if we broke lower, uh, below 1949, I was looking at, you know, 1949. I'm like, if we go below 1949, we really could bust through the day. I was looking for a move down to 1940 and then down to, you know, um, what is it, uh, 1934. So uh, one and a half deviations. I didn't expect to get the full two on the day. And uh, 1934 was sort of my bottom line price over here. And I probably would have got it right before, so really 1935. Uh, really was my second target. I didn't have a third target. So third target would really have to be like two and three deviations um, if it keeps going. But I, I think we're going to be stuck right here. So I got a few more points than I expected, about ten more than I expected, which is pretty sweet. Um, I love getting all that extra volatility in. And uh, so if you're throwing down, if you're using that MVP method, man, you're still going, still going short. So got to love that. Um, let's take a look at the Russell, see if there's uh, what kind of extra movement we have left on it. Just got a couple minutes here, trying to fill some of the time up and maybe give you something that can help you out through the end of the day. On the Russell, uh, my targets were going short. I was looking at uh, short at 1090. I had a target at 1080, and I had another target at 1072.5. And, uh, again, it moved on down to 1065.1, right down to a two-deviation move. So busted on through both of my targets. Um uh, and uh, just kept going. So uh, not bad, but uh, that'd be a follow the plan. Got to love the plan. And uh, we'll be having some day trade plans coming soon to you. Keep staying tuned to find out more about that as uh, we get them ready to release. All right, y'all have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow right here on the Diagnostic Trading Hour. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.